So what did you tell these uh, well, the gay for, activists? For, for, for one thing, for one thing, the gay activists that came to me and mm -hmm. that talked to me uh, were not nearly as impassioned as, as you suggest. I mean, they recognized that there were two sides to the to the question. They were concerned, um, and I think a lot of those concerns have been alleviated as they've seen the record that we've built. I think a lot of the people who were dubious about this case have now come to Ted, have come to me, and said, we're glad you brought this case. There's still some people that are very worried about what the Supreme Court will do. And I sympathize with that. I think these are people who have dedicated their lives to promoting uh, gay and lesbian rights. And they are people who you need to listen to. But I think one of the things that I've always said to them is what Ted just said here, which is this case is going to be brought. You can't keep people from litigating. And if it's going to be brought, don't you want it brought by people who know how to try cases, who know how to argue cases on appeal, who are going to have the resources and the commitment to try it right. And I think anybody that saw the case that we put in in California last month can see that we built a record there that you cannot look at that record and come away believing the Proposition 8 is constitutional. And that record took a lot of work. We brought in experts from all over the world, the leading experts, the leading scientific experts in psychology and sociology and in history and political science and anthropology. Um, we canvassed all the scientific studies. We made a presentation that would have been very difficult for a lot of lawyers to have made. So if you're going to have this case go up to the Supreme Court, we think it ought to go up with the absolute best record and we think we've made a very good record in that respect. Tell me about the two couples that you, uh, oh, you are representing. These are the they, real people they, behind they, the legal the, abstraction. They, these right? are the real people. Tell and me about we, it. we put them on the stand, all four of them, right at the beginning of the trial. And you could not listen to these people and not be moved uh, by their stories. You could not listen to these people and not be moved by their love for each other, by their desire to, to be married, by the harm, the pain, that they were being caused by not being able to do what we take for granted, which is to marry the person that we the, love. The lesbian couple are raising four boys. They are outstanding young young men. They've been together for many many years. Mm -hmm. the, the the gay male couple have been together in a relation, loving relationship for a long period of time. They put a real face on the discrimination, and they talked about how much it mattered to them that their loving relationship and their role in the community and their ability to go to work and pick up their children at school and all of those things are threatened and demeaned because people won't recognize that they are in the same kind of relationship as their next door neighbor. They have to explain every day. One of our plaintiffs said, I have to come out every day. I have to explain who this mm -hmm. partner, my partner, mm -hmm. it's, it's not a partner, it's a, it, they call it a domestic partnership in California. It's not a business deal, it's a loving relationship between two people who care about one another, who are committed to one another. In the first place, they're being denied the happiness that you and I have, and David has, and in the second place, we're hurting them enormously and hurting ourselves by treating a class of our citizens as different and as less worthy of respect. It is not American. It's not what is a part of our culture. It's damaging to America to take a class of our citizens who are every bit as contributors to our society, they're taxpayers, they're caring, loving, law-abiding people, and to say, we don't recognize, you read the language of Proposition 8, your relationship is not recognized. It's a second-class citizenship. There was a moment when you had your clients on the stand that you introduced a video uh, that was used by the opponents of right. gay marriage, the supporters of Proposition right. 8. Let me show you that and, sure. see, and, and talk about sure. it. Mom, guess what I learned in school today? What, sweetie? I learned how a prince married a prince, and I can marry a princess. Think it can happen? It's already happened. When Massachusetts legalized gay marriage, schools began teaching second graders that boys can marry boys. The courts ruled parents had no right to object. Under California law, public schools instruct kids about marriage. Teaching children about gay marriage will happen here unless we pass Proposition 8. Yes on 8. That was a scare tactic. That was something they knew they couldn't fight on the merits of the case as to whether 
gays and lesbians should have the same right to marry. So they tried to f put it in the context of saying, you've got to worry about what your kids are going to be taught in school. And that had, first, nothing to do with Proposition 8. The second thing is protect our children. Protect our children from what? Now that was a relatively mild ad. And you've got to take it in the context of some of the other ads that were being put out, okay? That talked about protecting children because homosexuals were sexual deviants that were going to prey on children. They were going to have underage sex. They were going to be carriers of disease. These were ads put out by official proponents of Proposition 8. So when you see the tagline, protect our children, ask yourselves, protect your children from what? The third thing that you have to keep in mind about this ad is that the underlying message is that Boys shouldn't marry boys. Men shouldn't marry men. Women shouldn't marry women. What we're saying is there ought to be a class of people that is excluded from marriage. And that's something that we think is fundamentally wrong as a matter of constitutional policy, but makes no sense if you believe in marriage, if you believe in the sanctity of marriage, if you believe in family values. Why in the world would you want to exclude a whole class of citizens from that. You've always had a respect for your adversary in the courtroom, and this adversary was one of your friends, Charles Cooper, right? Yeah, sure, yes. Sure. You sure. served with him in the Reagan yeah, Justice Department. Yeah. What was the most effective argument he made against you? Well, let me say something. I have great respect for him. He's a very fine lawyer, and he had a very fine group of lawyers, and they were doing their best. You asked me the most effective thing that happened um, on the other side. I will... I, 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 I didn't find any of their arguments effective. I have said from the beginning of this case, I've yet to hear an argument that persuades me, or even comes close to persuading me, that we should treat our gay and lesbian colleagues differently and deny them equality. But what really happened, which was a, a very eye-opening event during the course of the trial, during one of the earlier proceedings, the judge in our case asked my opponent, what harm to the institution of heterosexual marriage would occur if gays and lesbians were allowed to marry. This went back and forth and back and forth. The judge kept wanting an answer. What damage would be done to the institution of marriage if we allowed this to happen? And my opponent said, finally, he, he had to answer it truthfully. He paused and he said, I don't know. I don't know. That to me sums up the other side. They say the traditional definition of marriage, but nothing by allowing the two couples that were before the court or others like them to engage in a relationship with their partner where they can be treated as an equal member of society hurts your marriage or my marriage or David's marriage or any other heterosexual marriage. People are not going to say, I don't want to get married anymore if those same-sex people right. could get married. That's not going to happen. There is no evidence to support a basis for this prohibition. And yet your opponents kept coming back to the argument that the central reason for Proposition 8, and I'm quoting here, is its role, quote, in regulating naturally procreative relationships between men and women to provide for the nurture and upbringing of the next generation. We have never in this country required an ability or a desire to procreate as a condition to getting married. People who are at 70, 80, 90 years old may get married. People who have no interest in having children can get married. And what that argument does is tip it on its head. The Supreme Court has said that the right to get married is a fundamental individual right. And our opponents say, well, the state has an interest in procreation and that's why we allow people to get married. That marriage is for the benefit of the state. Freedom of relationship is for the benefit of the state. We don't believe that in this country. We believe that we created a government which we gave certain authority to the government. The government doesn't give us liberty. We give the government power to, to a certain degree to restrict our liberty, but subject to the Bill of Rights. So our, our fundamental difference is there. No one's stopping the procreational function of people that wish heterosexual people to get married and have all the children that they want. No one's stopping that. It is simply allowing people that have an abiding affection for one another to live a civil life uh, as your next door neighbor, the same way you are. The most important thing is that there's no connection between gay and lesbian marriage and procreation. 
Um, it doesn't limit procreation. It doesn't discourage heterosexual marriage. In fact, it allows gays and lesbians to raise their children. They're talking about the children of, of heterosexuals, okay? Those people aren't being harmed. They're ignoring the children of the gay and lesbian couples, who even the defendants in this case admitted were being harmed by Proposition 8. One of the opposing lawyers, and I can see why he would say this, credited the two of you with putting on a spectacular <laughs> show. But he said, your evidence was irrelevant. Quote, the best thing for a child is to have both a mother and a father. A same-sex couple couldn't offer the same benefits as a mother and a father. That, he said, is the case. There is no evidence. No evidence. They couldn't point to any. And all the evidence is to the contrary as to whether a heterosexual couple raises better children than a same-sex couple.